Hello, Bethel friends and family. Pastor Joe here. It's Wednesday, so it is time for a Bible study. I hope you're having a great week this week. Uh, we're at hump day, so we're going to make it. But hey, this is an exciting week because it ends or begins, however you look at Sunday, is Valentine's Day. So we are fully uh, in the middle of, of Love Month and Love Week. And so uh, if you need to buy some chocolate or flowers or get a card, uh, it's not too late. So just be aware of that. Hey, um, my wife, when, when we were dating, gave me these little uh, cutouts from the newspaper that said, Love Is. And it's a cute little picture of a little girl and a little boy. And it says, Love Is, dot, dot, dot. And it always had some statements. So I started looking that up. And I found out there was a girl named Kim uh, Casali. Back in the 1960s, about three days ago, um, she um, was a cartoonist and she fell in love with a journalist. And so um, she started writing him little like love notes and she would draw the picture and then she would make a love statement just showing him uh, her love for him, uh, for Roberto was his name. And so uh, this went on and eventually... Um, he started adding her cartoons to some of his publications, and, and then it just grew, and it became an actual column or a cartoon in the paper that runs to this very day. Uh, I think its official start uh, was somewhere in the late 60s, and it continues to this very day. Um, Roberto actually died of cancer, and so uh, Kim uh, gave it off or handed it off to another gentleman, Osprey, uh, to Bill Osprey to write, and I think back in 1975, he began uh, doing the cartoon and the captions. Uh, there's been books called The Love Is Book with all the little cartoons, and it was an interesting story about the two little figures, the girl and the boy. Uh, she said, um, she said, I just wanted to express my emotions of love for this man. So I, I, I drew a little uh, blob of a girl uh, who was feeling all these wonderful feelings of love. And then I drew a little blob of a boy who was receiving <laughs> all these expressions of love. And that's where we get the little cartoons. And Kim was a cartoonist. And uh, so she has passed away. But her legacy of sharing love is uh, continues to this day. Well, we're going to look at some scripture that's a love story. And I don't know if you've ever heard this. Maybe you have. The, the entire Bible is a love story. God loving us so much uh, that he desired to be back in relationship with us. Because if you think about the Garden of Eden, God created us for a relationship with him. Uh, and he didn't leave us alone in the garden. He, he put a man and a woman in the garden and so that they could experience love together and then experience his love for them, and they could reflect that love uh, to one another and then back to God himself. And so really the whole story of God and humanity is a love story. Well, I think that the ultimate picture of that is found in the Gospel of John, and that's where we've been. We've been in the Gospel of John. We've been working through that. So today we're going to look at big love, and, and of course we're to John 3, 16, and we're going to work the text around that and see what we can learn together. So this is our Bible study, the Bible study, Big Love, John 3, 9 through 21. It is February the 10th, 2021. So let's hear this scripture together. John uh, chapter 3, verses 9 through 21. How are these things possible? Nicodemus asked. Jesus replied, you are a respected Jewish teacher, and yet you don't understand these things? I assure you, we tell you what we know and have seen, and yet you won't believe our testimony. But if you don't believe me when I tell you about earthly things, how can you possibly believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ever gone to heaven and returned, but the Son of Man has come down from heaven. And as Moses lifted up, the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. 
God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. This is, there is no judgment against anyone who believes in him. But anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only son. And the judgment is based on this fact. God's light came into the world, but people loved the darkness more than the light, for their actions were evil. All who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it, for fear their sins will be exposed. But those who do what is right come to the light, so others can see that they are doing what God wants. Well, hopefully... Uh, you were excited when you got to that part of the text, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. Again, this is an incredible love story. It's the big love of God, that God would work sacrificially for our benefit. So let's dig in and have a Bible study, and let's, let's look at the verses. And I haven't said this lately, but I hope you have your Bible open or at least grab a Bible, dig through the verses, see the verses, uh, saturate, meditate on the verses. Like Psalm 1 says, he meditated on God's word both day and night. Let the word of God uh, be saturated in your heart and mind so that even as the psalmist said later, um, I've hidden your word within my heart that I might not sin against you. So let's dig in here. What do we learn? Well, the first thing we see is where love begins, back Back to the basics. Now, you probably remember that last week we looked at this whole phrase to be born again, Jesus and Nicodemus having a, a conversation at night. And so after Jesus has made this very clear that we have to be born of the Spirit, just like we're born uh, flesh and blood, we have to be born spiritually. Uh, Nicodemus is really struggling. And so Jesus says, okay, let's, let's unpack this and let's dig in. It's about stretching the mind. Jesus said. And so as he begins to explain this to Nicodemus, he says, okay, let's just, let's just get back to the basics. And so Nicodemus says, how can these things be possible? How can a person be born again? And Jesus says, replies, you are a respected Jewish teacher and yet you don't understand these things? I assure you, we tell you what we know and have seen, and yet you won't believe our testimony. But if you don't believe me when I tell you about earthly things, how can you possibly believe if I tell you about heavenly things? Jesus says, Nicodemus, you've got to expand your mind. You can't just stay in the concrete, uh, which is how we learn up into a certain age, and then we move into the abstract. We have to see beyond uh, what is immediately before us, and so we have to stretch our minds. Well, the natural world and a shared history, and so Jesus begins to talk about the natural world, things that you can see and experience. He says, no one has ever gone to heaven and returned, but the Son of Man has come down from heaven. And as Moses lifted up the bronze snake, Son of man must be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. And so Jesus goes back, I skipped this verse. He says, but if, if you don't believe me when I tell you about earthly things, how can you possibly believe if I tell you about heavenly things? Well, there's a natural order, Jesus says. And I'm talking to you about natural things that, that transpire all around you. And you know, even the scripture says that, that creation itself declares the glory of God, that there is something far and beyond what we can see, but because we see certain things, we understand God. But then he says, we have a shared history, and it's the stories that Nicodemus, being a religious leader, would have known, the Old Testament and the story is actually during the wilderness journey, uh, a lot of the children of Israel started to sin against God. And so these snakes appeared. God sent a curse upon them. They were being bitten by snakes and dying. And they started begging for Moses to do something. And so Moses prayed and God said, place a, a bronze serpent on the top of a staff. And if everyone, anyone who's been bitten looks at the bronze serpent on the staff, they'll be healed. They had to look. 
They had to look to God, but look to the remedy that God would offer a serpent placed on a staff. Well, we know there's a big allusion there uh, to Jesus being nailed to a cross as an offering that God would offer so that people could be saved from death. And so they had this shared history, though, of this story where God supernaturally saved his people uh, by a physical act uh, of Moses placing this bronze serpent on a staff. And so they knew that history together. And then the big reveal was in verse 15, so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. And who were they to believe in? So the Son of Man must be lifted up. And so Jesus is starting to reveal his story, what God will do, what is going to transpire. So it is the big reveal. Well, big love has a starting point, which becomes clear when received. And so Jesus says to Nicodemus, you've got to believe what I'm telling you. You've got to receive this truth. You've got to ultimately believe in me. Well, the next thing we see uh, back to the basics, and listen, let me get to the right point here. And then the next place is, what does love look like? It's the mosaic. And a mosaic is actually pieces put together that make something beautiful. And so there's actually a Wesleyan church, I think it's in Detroit, called the Mosaic. And they talk about all the colors, uh, all of us coming together, whatever whatever our ethnicity, coming to med together to make a beautiful picture. And so what is the mosaic? It's all the ways that God is working to bring us to the place where we can experience the very best of God. And it's John 3, 16 and John 3, 17. Uh, John 3, 17 is exciting to me as John 3, 16. Well, love expressed for God so loved. This is how God loved the world. Now, is it talking about God loving dirt and water and air? Well, yeah, he created all that. But it, technically, it's speaking about humanity. For God so loved all of humanity that he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. This is God expressing his love toward us, but he does it through his son by sending his one and only son. So love is received. Everyone who believes in him, everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. And so again, Jesus is saying to Nicodemus and to us, you must believe you have to receive this love. And love's liberation. I was trying to, to think about how this uh, would could be explained, that we would all have eternal life. So I was thinking about a, a physical reality when we fall in love. And it's so interesting when people fall in love, how they're open to another person and open to the possibilities of life. I mean, two people fall in love and they start dreaming about getting married, having children, uh, maybe, you know, the, having a home together, uh, a, a legacy together, a life together. And it, it just opens up a whole new world to two people uh, who before were just autonomous, trying to figure out life on their own. And then love comes together and there's this huge liberation, this freedom that is experienced in love. And so for, for God's love for us, it's this idea of being with him eternally, that we could have life eternal. Well, that's love's liberation. Well, big love paints a beautiful picture of the move of God through his son to liberate the quarantine from isolation. And yes, that's a big time COVID, <laughs> uh, COVID example there. But you know, that quarantine, some terrible stuff. And if you've been all alone in quarantine, listen, I I can feel your pain. I was there. And God doesn't want us to be isolated, but he wants us to be united with him. Well, how is love experienced? Love is to be lived. Love lived. And that's the end of our text here. There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him, but anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only son. Well, do you remember back to John 3? God sent his son into the world not to judge the world.
world, but to save the world through him. Listen, God is about liberating us, about setting us free. And so he makes it very clear there's no judgment against anyone who believes in him. Well, we're in the judgment-free zone. Maybe you've seen those commercials for Planet Fitness, and they talk about the judgment-free zone. Listen, if I walk into a gym, somebody's going to say, brother, you should have been here a long time ago. But listen, there is this understanding that God doesn't want to judge us. He wants to liberate us. And too often, we have a wrong mindset about God, our Father, who's just looking to tell us how bad we are, about how we've messed up, about how we've done wrong. But what God wants us in a relationship with His Son, where He can say, listen, there's no judgment. You're free from judgment. You are saved. You are granted eternal life. And so God wants us in the judgment for His own. Well, He gave us the perfect example. And you know that. The judgment is based on the fact God's light came into the world, but people love the darkness more than the light, for their actions were evil. What does this mean? God's uh, here it is. God's light came into the world. Well, we know back from Isaiah uh, that those who were walking in deepest, darkest gloom upon them, a light has dawned. It was Jesus. Jesus would come into the world to dispel the darkness. And we saw that in the beginning of John chapter 3. God sent light to dispel the darkness. God is perfect. He is light. Uh, There is no impurity in him, and he sent the perfect example, his son, into the world. Well, then there's this clarifying witness at the end, and it says, all who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it for fear their sins will be exposed. But those who do what is right come to the light so others can see that they are doing what God wants. Listen, our witness clarifies where we belong. Have we received the gift of God? Have we walked into the light? And in 1 John uh, chapter 1, verse 7, it says, Those who walk in the light as he is in the light have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses them from all sin. And listen, if we choose to walk in the light, we live in forgiveness. We live in love. We live in a relationship, not only with God, but with each other. But if we choose the darkness, if we choose quarantine, if we choose isolation, if we choose separation, we don't enjoy any of those benefits that God gives. And it's obvious the choices that we're making. Well, big Love offers the happily ever after to all who choose the experience. Listen, I was thinking too about the Hallmark Channel. You, you know, I, I, I watch those Hallmark movies. And, and the thing about those Hallmark movies, I think that people kind of gravitate to, those that watch them, is this idea of the happily ever after. Like the old Disney movies when I was a little kid and it, the, always you got to the, and they lived happily ever after. And then you had this big, uh, the, the words that came up on the screen, the end. Uh, they lived happily ever after, and that's the end of the story. And, you know, that's what God wants for us, a love story that ends with happily ever after. That's called eternal life with God in the presence of God. Listen, don't you want a happily ever after? You know, it doesn't matter about your earthly relationships, and sometimes we have some bad ones, and some things don't go the way we want them to. We can't control other people's actions. But did you know we can choose to receive God's love? We can receive His love for us and be in a relationship with Him that never ends. Uh, It's just a happily ever after. Forever and ever being loved, receiving love, and giving love, and enjoying love. Hey, you know it's Valentine's week, and God is all about love. Well, this is the grand conclusion. Big love began with the creator and sustainer of humanity. His desire has always been our familial relationship, being in family with him. No matter how far we have moved from him, no matter how great our sin, he has offered us a way back. We are loved. We are pursued. And we can be free to experience all he wants for us. But most of all, he allows us the choice to receive or to reject his love. He doesn't want us isolated in quarantine anymore. Love is, uh, Kim Casali would say, love is worth receiving. Receive it now. He's been waiting. Well, let's pray together. 
Father God, we are grateful for your love for us. And Lord, we would just confess so often we don't receive it. We can't comprehend that we could truly be loved if we've ever been honest with ourselves and seen who we really are, sinful people. And yet, you came to sinful humanity and said, I don't condemn you. Just believe in me. And so, Lord, I thank you for that gift. Help me to believe. Help me to trust more. Help me to have greater faith and bless my friends as they experience this with me, as they look into your perfect law, the, your word, your, your love letter to us, and receive the incredible gift that your son is. Jesus, we thank you for coming. We thank you for being lifted up, placed on the cross, that we could receive this incredible gift. And Lord, we love you, and we choose you now, and we do so in your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, hey, if you've never received the love of God, would you just tell Jesus right now, hey, Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for claiming me as your own. And I receive that love. And I'm going to I'm gonna stay in relationship with you. I'm going to love you as you've loved me. And I'm going to show it by loving others. And listen, just dig into the word. Just stay here with John. Dig into the gospel of John. And you can enjoy this love letter lit, written to me and you. Well, you know, there's God to be a blessing. And I changed gears today. I went to uh, the gospel uh, of Revelation, <laughs> John's further writings and the blessing from Revelation 1, 4 through 6. Grace and peace to you from the one who is, who always was, and who is still to come from the sevenfold spirits before his throne and from Jesus Christ. He is the faithful witness to these things. The first to rise from the dead and the ruler of all the kings of the world. All glory to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by shedding his blood for us. He has made us a kingdom of priests for God his Father. All glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen and amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.